Accessibility, affordability, and acceptability are challenges of healthcare delivery system in our country. And India is a country of different cultures, different terrains, different challenges, different health seeking behaviors. You know, in health, the major challenge is basically trained man manpower. If you have a very good trained manpower, you can do wonder sections. Yeah, there are a lot of nurses who were coming out from the nursing schools had the knowledge, but they didn't have the competency, they didn't have the skills. I think the major focus is so much on knowledge accumulation and people forget that there's a different concept learning. Traditionally, we used to do trainings in a way where you used to call people at a centralized location and for convenience of trainers, we used to give them all the information that we wanted to give in one go. You know, if you try to teach too many skills at one go, then it becomes uh, difficult for the learners. It has to be a low dose, high frequency training. You break the content into smaller pieces. Give the content at the convenience of the trainees close to their place, close to the places of practice and, the, and their places of residence, and also in doses that they are able to digest and comprehend. If this drill is being done for doctors, for nurses, then this will bring results in the field. Therefore, we started with the idea of skills lab. People acquire initial skills, but those skills are lost over time. Skills lab, what has been happening? They have set up a set of mannequins or set up certain sets of equipment and people are made to practice in batches. It's not a decision making process. Skills are acquired at the individual level and skills are bound to have attrition. Skills is what the hands can do for a healthcare provider. But simulation is an environment of education and training where it is more structured, where a lot of thinking has gone inside. There's been a lot of greater understanding about the science of learning mm -hmm. and recognizing that different people Everyone learn in different thinking. ways. Some people learn through psychomotor opportunities. Some people learn through experience. Some people learn by practice. And a simulation combines all those things. It kind of meets everybody where they are because it gives everybody a different channel for learning. In a mannequin I can teach them, okay, this is the way you do a suction or this is the way how you put in a tube. Rather than theoretically discussing, they start the treatment, I change my setting, I say, baby has deteriorated. Now what does the person do? Now how do I establish that scenario with visualization? That's what the simulation lab says. How do we learn to simulate a clinical context. How do I make someone learn how to identify and stabilize a child with respiratory distress? To identify a child to be in shock and teach them how to stabilize them. A lot of us know a lot of things, but they don't get implemented at the bedside. And you talk to them, they say, oh, we knew it, but they just could not implement, or they could not identify. Your learning becomes effective if you experience the event. And there is something called as human factors. This is different from knowledge. So any of those factors, be it environmental, be it with regards to your job, which can alter your thinking and care at the bedside. First of all, we need to know what the learner actually feels is necessary to improve the situation. See, we all feel that somebody should learn something. So that is uh, what we call a felt need. But deep down, there will be a real need. Then we need to know who is the target audience. Is it okay if I just teach the doctors? Is it okay if uh, nurses are involved in training? but do most scenarios involve both of them working together. Then the third part of needs assessment probably is um, where are we going to do it? You can have a nice big workshop in a skills lab or we could set up everything in a five-star hotel auditorium and run the session. Uh, but there is also some advantage in doing what we call as in-situ uh, simulation. We actually go into the labor ward and we play the same scenario out and then we see. And, and simulation is a safe place to learn. You can use the before and the after opportunities to reflect on what worked and what didn't work. The important session for preparation is that you make sure that you provide a realistic experience. And we want to kind of encourage that reflection by rehearsing or by doing the simulation session and that you have enough opportunity to actually correct the mistakes if at all any done. And that is what we call as debriefing. That is the area where we 
bring out their own experiences and discuss around it. Simulation learning methodology strongly believes in facilitated learning. The traditional learning has been, I teach, you learn. Rather than let us sit together and find out what should be done. We don't label ourselves as a teachers. We call ourselves as facilitators. We are just facilitating so that that person can learn in a better way. Um, when it comes to simulation, it is not the technology, it is the technique. Technology can supplement, but if people think it is a substitute for learning, that is a misconception. Teamwork. This is one thing which is lagging a lot in our country. We always work as an individual. Simulation can be used to facilitate and galvanize both team-based learning and team-based practice. You are only as good as your teams. The doctors train in medical colleges, nurses in nursing schools, technicians in their schools, and they are expected to come together and train, manage a patient. So they are all in their own different zones. That's where simulation really can help. Because simulation allows a team to all be working in their individual roles but with a unified goal. One of the things in health is that it is a team effort. So if you have a very good team, you can really produce great results. We need to see a difference because at the end of the training, no matter what kind of training we give, it will only be measured by the success at the bedside. How can we make it more effective? How can we make sure that it actually benefits the sickest of the sick? Simulation can take care of both these bottlenecks of accelerating the pace of training and improving the quality issues. One professional cannot help or save lives. It is a team which is very, very important. If there is a preparedness, it's no more an emergency. Whenever they are awarded as the best life saver, they often refer that the training has made them to save more lives. In the center of all these things, the strong link is the science of simulation.